We know how to compute definite integrals from A to B, but what happens if one of the boundaries is infinite? In that case, we have a so-called improper integral, an improper integral of type 1 to be precise. How can we handle this? That is what you will learn in this video. So how can we compute integral from A to infinity, say, if one of the boundaries is infinite? So the definition goes as follows. You first integrate from A to L, where L is some fixed number, and then afterwards you take the limit L to infinity. So you have to take two steps. First you compute your definite integral, as you know how to do, and L will appear there, it's in the boundary, and afterwards you take L to infinity. Well, you have to take a limit, so the limit can exist, then the improper integral is called convergent, and if the limit does not exist, then the improper integral is called divergent. So let's do a few examples. So what about integral 1 over x squared of x if we integrate from 1 to infinity? So what do we need to do? Uh, we integrate from 1 to l and take l to infinity then. Uh, 1 over x squared of x equals x to the power minus 3 over 2. We know an antiderivative, that's minus 2 x to the power minus 1 half between the boundaries. We plug in the boundaries. The lower boundary gives us a minus 2. We are in the lower boundary, so minus minus 2 is plus 2. And the upper boundary gives us then minus 2 over square root of L. Then we take L to infinity, uh, the second term uh, goes to 0, and uh, this means that we end up with only the first term, which is 2. So this integral is convergent and converges to 2. Next, integral 0 to infinity of cosine of x. What happens now? Well, we do the same trick. We replace the upper boundary 0 infinity by L, and then take limits to infinity, we know an antiderivative of the cosine, it's the sine. Uh, we plug in the boundaries, uh, lower boundary sine of 0 equals 0. So we end up with sine of L, take L to infinity, but the sine just keeps on wiggling, doesn't go to infinity, but the limit does not exist, so this integral is divergent. Next example, uh, we have integral e to the power minus st dt, and now the question is, s is a parameter over here, and for which values of s is this integral convergent? So we have an exponential, we have to integrate with respect to t, uh, and that's easy. Uh, oh, uh, and the derivative of e to the power minus st equals e to the power minus st over minus s, provided s is not equal to zero. Uh, and we will do the s equals zero case uh, uh, shortly afterwards. Then we plug in the boundaries, the lower boundary gives us a 1 over s, and the upper boundary gives us e to the power minus sl over s. And now we have to be a bit careful, we take l to infinity. Now if, if, f would be, if s would be negative, say minus 5, then we get e to the power 5l, and we take l to infinity, which blows up. If l is positive on the other hand, say 3 or something like that, we get e to the power minus 3l, if l goes to infinity, this vanishes. So this limit only exists if f s is positive, and then it vanishes and we end up with 1 over s. So for s positive, our integral is convergent and converges to 1 over s. Is if s is negative, our integral is divergent. If s would be 0, we get e to the power 0 equals 1, and if we integrate that from uh, one, 0 to infinity, we also blow up. So for s equals 0, we are also divergent, so our integral converges only for s bigger than 0. 